You're tuned in to Agriculture Today, and we start our Friday show as we normally do with a grain market update. And then for our grain market update this week, we have Key State Grain Economist Dan O'Brien. Dan, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Shelby. Dan, before we started this and we were talking through the grain market, you mentioned it's very dynamic times. And are we seeing that with our futures? Certainly are, you know, and, and with regard to the changes in weather patterns, uh, weather conditions for, for crops, in, yes, in Kansas, but but beyond that into the central eastern northern Corn Belt and you you name it, uh, we, we just have a lot of things domestic that, that are affecting domestic U.S. crop production potential. We, yes, we have, for the most part, we have most of our hard red winter wheat crop in, but still struggling with issues up in the northern northern plains uh, for uh, for white wheat, for hard red spring, for Durham, uh, much less what we what we're seeing in the uh, in terms of uh, hot dry conditions affecting corn right during August. Well, we're towards the end of August, but it's affecting. Uh, pollination uh, towards the end for, for some some of those critical time frames but still uh, having a, a big effect on the crop heading now into for soybeans uh, the uh, uh, poll the time of flowering uh, again a lot of the old standby uh, viewpoints were that we make corn in July we make soybeans in in, in August and uh, and without doubt we uh, uh, I know chip Chip Redmond in our house here at K-State has a lot to say about all of that in terms of hot, dry conditions. And uh, uh, so uh, a lot of what I would have to say would would work off of what our climatologists, people like Chip, would have to say, too. So and and in response to that, so we moved into into uh, changing futures prices uh, yesterday uh, on Thursday, the 27th, corn corn. Uh, Closed at 5.33 and a quarter of uh, Dece at uh, new, new crop beast contract 5.42 and, and, and a quarter. Also, both those down six or seven cents. But but the broad in the broader picture of where where we've been moving uh, for for corn, we've we've been at, had had traded down to to about four dollars and seventy cents as high as about 5.65 in the last four or five days, and they're now at 5.33 and in in. Uh, I guess from a price point of view, it's a welcome surprise. Uh, quite often, in a if we'd had uh, no problems with with production, we in in the United States for corn, we probably would have gone down below five dollars and just stayed there. But but now we have issues that we're wrestling with. So and uh, so and when you look for soybeans, a uh, pretty similar situation. You've got. Uh, uh, August closing at fifteen dollars and thirty two cents, and we're just about to enter into what we call the contract delivery time frame to close out that contract. And uh, so, uh, again, fifteen thirty two September fourteen fifty three uh, November just under fourteen dollars. And uh, in terms of price trends, we're we're seeing soybeans not not having. Uh, uh, I guess just come up to previous highs, but we we have now exceeded them. Previous highs, uh, uh, going way back to January, were uh, well about fifteen twenty or so, and, and now we've traded up as high as about over fifteen seventy five. Have come down some off of that. So strong times in the in the soybean futures market, uh, and I think the underlying issue there has to do with with how the USDA had dropped uh, in the. June, end of June uh, acreage report had dropped soybean acres about four million acres and had raised corn about two, and and uh, the reason we're seeing the soybean market in response to hot dry conditions be so much more responsive than than the corn market is just again we gosh we chopped acres so much so uh, when it's, uh, that's that's a highly scientific university term I we chopped acres but the USDA did drop acres that much for for soybeans and now it just exacerbates any any bit of worry that we have in that crop. Excuse me, and for wheat, um, really for for us as hard red winter wheat producers here in Kansas, we uh, we had so many problems all, th all, all throughout this market here. The, the far the farther west we had gone, and uh, so so now those that those that have wheat that were blessed to be able to get a crop out are uh, uh, you know did, did they did they sell at harvest? Have they held? If uh, we're we're seeing now a, a jump up in in wheat prices, almost well to over nine twenty five on on the high end of trade, 
closed yesterday at at eight sixty six and a half. Um, again, it uh, it's it's uh, no no doubt a lot of what's going on is not just our worries about dryness up in the Dakotas. You know, the, there's a spring wheat tour that's trying to assess all that right now, or it's happening it has happened. Uh, but again, this whole issue overseas has uh, has the world market so worried about getting at, having adequacy of supplies, and uh, as as Ukraine has. Uh, uh, has now trouble ship, shipping grain out. I, uh, again, I, I touch on that, but Anton, Antonina Bariaca, uh in in our shop, I know you've talked with her as well. We'll, we'll uh, can, can and we'll talk about that at a lot more in a lot more depth. So quite the times in these markets, and uh, just a lot of volatility. And it's polite to say it's dynamic because it's uh, uh, in some of these markets uh, there, there's enough potential for different things to happen that it's almost scary i want to add i want to add one thing in i don't uh, uh often talk as much as i should have about grain sorghum but grain sorghum exports have been really strong really strong in re recent weeks finishing the marketing year uh, at least the pace that we see uh very, very positively so uh and I, so i think we start to see some of that as we look at the price the cash prices that we're seeing around the state and is that some of that dynamic movement that we're seeing in the market potential because it's a weather dependent one also something we've talked a lot about in the past especially for the feed grains uh the, what what movement we see in the feed grains a lot of that's that's mainly because of weather what we see in the uh in uh in soybeans that's that's uh weather on on reduced acreage so uh I would say when it so when you look at uh Cash prices. It's interesting that we've we've seen uh, in our bellwether markets uh, cor the corn price and in St. Garden City with a basis of a, of a dollar over the futures. A cash basis at uh, six thirty three new crop bids five seventy two thirty cents over, and we, and we see pretty good prices uh, all all the around the rest of the state. Again, uh, Columbus six eighteen. Uh, Colby six thirteen five about about six dollars in Topeka about about so in Hutchinson about five sixty eight in Salina so we see some pretty good corn prices you do see for for uh, uh, grain sorghum prices especially now as we've got these these bids coming in uh, strongest positive basis actually uh, it would is uh, in Columbus 30, 30 over five sixty three uh, in in the export oriented areas you've got uh, uh, Topeka is showing up pretty well at 25 over it, but really er everywhere with a positive cash basis for, for grain sorghum. So, so when we start looking at how, uh, uh, strong, strong export numbers for sorghum uh, affect, affect the market. Well, we, we look at the cash basis, see if it's showing the strength and, and, and those numbers are positive right now. I would say for soybeans, uh, all all soybean prices and here we're almost at the end of june new a new crop uh, excuse me end of july a new crop coming on and, and we're looking at across the state at these areas we cover top prices over 14 dollars. so that's just indicative of the of the uh, type of uh, of challenge and uh, worry that people have on those markets i would and for wheat we're seeing um seeing uh, prices uniformly uh, at, at, at the main markets that, that we're following. Uh, on the low side, 811 out in Colby to the high side, 856 in both Salina and Hutchinson. So uh, again, pretty strong wheat prices. And uh, uh, it, it really the issue there is it, it, as we get talking about, uh, about wheat is who has it to sell? That's the issue. It won't won't be long now. Uh, here we're we're at the again the end of uh, end of July, just about to enter August. Uh, give us one or two months. We'll be thinking about answering the question of of gosh, do we have moisture to go forward and seed wheat in the fall? So that that uh, as you and I talk in thirty days, that'll be the next topic for for the wheat market that we'll be we'll be discussing. And Dan, you've recently written some articles for Ag Manager, and you want to kind of talk about them today. They kind of give a version for domestic markets, but also international markets. And so first focusing that conversation in on corn. Yeah. Uh, the, on the domestic side, we're heading into the August report, uh, and uh, we will get uh, a, a new measure of what the uh, USDA NAS thinks 
or is forecasting for yields. We had dropped those numbers from 181 and a half in the uh, May, June or, uh, projections down to 177 and a half on US yields in the July numbers. <laughs> Will we stay at that number? Will we drop to 175, 174, something like that? Uh, you know, again, it's not so much what I say, but what, as we mentioned earlier, what Chip Redmond <laughs> is forecasting that that really affects that crop. So right now where it, it's a, it's a weather driven situation if, if that happens, uh, think about corn. We have, again, high enough acres that we would have to get below 173, 174 thereabouts to really get below 2 billion bushels carry out. And, and we need probably get to, to 2 billion or below to really see things tighten up. And that, that, uh, that hasn't happened. That, that, that seems to be challenging, at, at least at this time, unless the hot, dry conditions just continue and, and, and pervade. I would say for soybeans, that's, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we're now heading into, into uh, uh, August, uh, just about on the verge of August starting. Uh, and uh, the USDA projected 52 bushels per acre yields on, on tighter acres. Uh, and and if uh, we stay hot and dry, we start coming off 52 bushels an acre down to down to 50 and a half, down to 49 or something less. Then then uh, in essence, you it's not it's not uh, difficult with lower acres to see us getting down to about 100 million bushels or so. And things really tightening up, and uh, so so we have the potential to see all that much more volatility in the soybean market, and that's uh, what the prices are showing. And I'd say for wheat, uh, we're we're um, uh, it, the, our, our pervading issue is, uh, uh, again, how tight do things have to get overseas for U.S. wheat exports to actually start up again? And that that's uh, kind of an open question. I, I think in coming weeks, we'll continue to watch for that answer. So overall, kind of right now, just waiting to see what's happening. And through the weeks, we'll just gain more and more information. Yeah, it, it's the production season. You know, it's we're, we're, we're determining supplies right now. And uh, uh, particularly for corn and for soybeans and for or for the northern crops for wheat. And uh, uh, we're, it, it's we're, 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 we're all trying to gauge how much are our, our, through those supply demand balance sheets, how much we end up or for ending stocks, how tight will things get? And then whatever we have left or we think we'll have left, we'll, we'll uh, gauge prices accordingly. And and for say for soybeans or for, for wheat, if things get tight from the Northern states, uh, it, then, then if prices move up to ration demand, so we don't get too tight here domestically. That's, that's the way I kind of piece this together. Dan, I appreciate you joining us today and giving us our grain market update. Thank you very much, Shelby. I appreciate it. That was K-State Grand Economist Dan O'Brien. I will link his articles from agmanager.info in today's show notes, which you can find on agtoday.net. We're cutting to a short break now, but we'll be back with more ahead on Agriculture Today.